It's Birmingham at Michigan. The visiting Stallions favored by six and a half. Total sitting at 41 and a half. The forecast, zero precipitation or wind for Jake the Earthquake Bates, who emerged as a star inside Ford Field. Let's look at the Stallions offense against the Panthers defense. Fascinating matchup here when you consider what both of these individual units showed us in week one. And hats off to Colin Bauer. Man, the Michigan first-year defensive coordinator. He was promoted from the D-line coach under Mike Nolan last year. He comes out of nowhere with a near-perfect game plan. They get after A.J. early. They threw a really good offense completely off balance in the first half of that game. Can they do the same against Birmingham? Well, here's the one thing they have working against them, I believe, in week two. Matt Corral and Adrian Martinez can both run. And this offense for Birmingham already seems so wide open that when you add that element, Skip Holtz is just going to keep adapting that system to Matt Corral's strengths. Even Martinez, three carries for 52 yards on Saturday before he got hurt. And Corral, I told you he wouldn't. He took off when he needed to as well. That's going to create challenges for this Michigan front. But Daniel Wise, great game last week for the Panthers. He'll be ready to stuff that run. I think it'll be tough sledding for the Stallions to top their 183 on the ground that they had against Arlington from last week. But, man, they were rolling in that second half. Guys, they ended this game, the Birmingham offense, 25 first downs. I mean, they hold the ball for basically the entire fourth quarter. So I'll just go ahead and say it. In the USFL conference, this is the best offense against the best defense on that side. I think most of us probably penciled Michigan in for an 0-2 start early, but they had a brutal schedule, and here they are with a chance at 2-0. and How huge would that be for that, that fan base? And, and, and how do you slow down Matt Corral, though? You don't. You just don't. I mean, this is a guy who's going to get better every week until we realize he probably never belonged in the UFL. Let's be honest. He, he has the talent around him that could even be a bigger test than A.J. McCarron was for the Michigan D in Week 2 and Colin Bauer. And Really, if you're Michigan, your edge here is to ugly this one up. You just want to make it physical. When Martinez comes in, force him to throw the ball. And don't give up double moves to one of the fastest wide receivers in the league in Deion Kane. Don't let that one slip by you. Um, I think Birmingham falls a few points short of last week's scoring output. I don't think they quite get 27 on the board, uh, which is their total from last week. I think you're looking at more of a lower 20s, which total here at 41 and a half. Um, sort of leaned under on, but I didn't want to take the under with, with a Skip Holtz offense. I just feel like this offense is capable of being the first team in the UFL to put up that 30 spot. But Colin Bauer looks to keep the momentum going. Mike Nolan and that Michigan defense it could be without Breland Speaks this week, which might be huge. Keep an eye on that injury report. Taking a glance at the other side of the ball, Panthers offense lining up against the Stallions defense. This is the real edge in this matchup for me. I'm not confident in Marcel Belfay's unit in this one. EJ Perry threw two picks last week. Um, maybe not his fault on the second one, but guys like Mark Gilbert, who, who might be the best cover corner in this league for Birmingham, are going to feast on that. Perry only 50% of his passes completed last week, but he did kind of look like Ben DiNucci out there scrambling around. So he's got some wheels and he's got some navigation and some elusiveness on the field, but passing game wasn't great. Um, those two rushing touchdowns that he had really swung the whole game. And like I said, they weren't cakewalks into the end zone. He had to really earn those. And uh, Wes Hills for Michigan is certainly going to be a tougher challenge than the Arlington backfield presented for Birmingham. Um, ultimately though, <sighs> This offense just could not sustain drives. They relied too much, did Michigan, on the explosive plays on the offensive side. Their first five series, they had three punts and two turnovers. And I just have to give the edge to the Stallions defense. Pretty large here. Um, it's obvious who I'm going with, I think, at this point. You see the Birmingham defense, like, maybe a little mediocre numbers when it comes to UFL rankings because Arlington did put up some yards, but I mean, they, they allowed Arlington to three points in the second half of that game. So let me be clear here. I'm, I'm taking Birmingham. Um, I respect the Michigan Panthers. I do. 
and I actually lean them to cover. Uh, too big of a number. I think it's a four to five point game. And and a lean to the under. I'd give it actually a pretty confident lean. Not a best bet, but I like the under. I, I don't think Michigan will score much. Um, I think the key for the, the back-to-back upset for the Panthers is just get to midfield because you got Jake Bates. I mean, you could get three with any time at this guy. I, I don't want to see a punt from Michigan's offense unless you're at, like, the minus 45 or farther back. Send this kid out. Zook, Birmingham, Michigan, I think I have an idea of what you're going here. Straight I'm up. sure you do. Yeah, straight up, I'm taking Birmingham. They're too balanced on both sides of the ball. Um, like you said about ball control, I like Michigan's defense, but I don't think it holds up. Enough so. to cover? We're this, not talking this, about We're talking straight. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This is this six and a half is six, it, it's, the, the only spread. I think, well, D.C.'s didn't really move either. This spread didn't move. We saw some movement in San Antonio. We saw some movement on St. Louis. This line stayed pretty rock solid, which means there's not a lot of money coming in on either side. I don't know. You make Michigan a, a, a touchdown dog two weeks in a row at home. I just, I don't think, I don't think Birmingham covers. I see like a 22 to 19 or something really? like that here. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. The- really would be 22 to 19. I mean, that's going to get you 41. So that's going to put you right there at the over under as right. well. Right? I'm putting both defenses kind of on the yeah. same level playing field. Um, and that Birmingham, Birmingham offense is outstanding. They're yeah. well above Michigan. And they're going to get better. That's the scary and, part. Right. That right, was week a, one. That's right? week one, right. 